How's it going guys? Today I'm going to talk about how to use moving average to increase your trading profits and watch all the way until the end because I'm going to share with you what is the best moving average to use which is a question that I get almost every single week, every single month First thing first, what are moving averages? Basically this is an indicator that is used very often by a lot of traders both professional and also retail traders so what is the function of moving averages? Because the forex market moves in minor fluctuations, even though it might be going uptrend or going downtrend, okay? It moves in minor fluctuations. So a lot of times, traders would get distracted by all of these mini fluctuations. So what moving averages do is that it smooths out the price actions and all of these fluctuations and volatility. So all you need to focus on is that one line that's sloping upwards or sloping downwards, especially when the market is going downtrend. So basically, how is this line calculated? Okay, for example, if you are using a moving average of, let's say, 50. Okay, so what this 50 means is that this line is produced by taking the average closing price of the past 50 candles, average that out, divide it by 50, then you get this line. In a way, it's like a best fit line. So your moving average is the average closing price of X number of periods. So if you're using 50, that will be over 50 periods. If you're using 20, then it will be over 20 periods. So the lower this number is, the faster it will respond to the changes in price action. So a 5 period moving average would be more volatile, you see a lot more volatility as compared to a 50 period moving average. You realize that it will be more smooth as compared to a 5 period moving average. There are pros and cons when it comes to using a small number and using a large number. Later I'm going to share more about that. So there are two very common types of moving average. Basically, what is a simple moving average all about? So when you're using a simple moving average, equal weightage is given to all of the price movements. What do I mean by equal weightage? Like I said, for example, if you use again 50 moving average, period moving average, it takes the closing price of all of the past 50 candles. If you study statistics, you already know that if there is a outstanding data out of the whole entire data pool that you get it's going to distort the data tremendously okay so this one the so-called downsides of simple moving average so what's the function of simple moving average it allows you to determine the overall big picture of the trend in other words are you trading in a bullish market or are you trading in a bearish market and normally sma would have a slow response to the changes in price action and price reversals as compared to exponential moving average which is why we don't use simple moving average for entry we only use it to determine what kind of trend that we are trading at right now the thing about moving average is that it doesn't work 100% of the time just like any other indicator in fact it only works about 40 to 60% of the time in order to time your entry properly you need a lot more indicators a lot more filters but the basic thing that you need is a good simple moving average just for you to prevent yourself from trading against the trend now how do you use simple moving average to determine whether you're trading along with the trend or against the trend the first thing that you need to look at when it comes to the sma line is this thing called the slope is it sloping like this upwards or is it sloping downwards, okay? Because the slope will help you determine the direction of the price action. In other words, the direction of the markets right at this moment. So use simple moving average for you to prevent yourself from trading against the trend. Now if you study very successful traders and investors, most of them will tell you that you should avoid trading against the trend. In other words, don't go and sell in a bullish market. Don't go and buy in a bearish market. The reason why people do this is because they want to buy at bottoms. They want to sell at tops. Nobody can pinpoint bottoms and tops exactly. Of course, you once in a while come across people who can pick 
tops and bottoms but that's just what I don't trade with if you can pick tops and bottoms then good for you if you are fine with trading against the trend then keep on doing it so of course simple moving average will allow you to spot momentum trading opportunities but of course this is the second criteria that you need to make sure because the first thing first you need to make sure is that you are trading along with the trend so aside from the slope that you need to make sure that's moving upwards for bullish market the bearish market has to be sloping downwards the second criteria you need to make sure is to ensure that your price for a bullish market is above the moving average okay whereas for the second criteria you know make sure that the price is below ideally the moving average in a sell market so of course this one might be a little bit confusing at first then i'll give you some examples so don't worry about that okay now of course another significant function of simple moving average is that it acts as a dynamic support and resistance if you're still not clear about support resistance feel free to check out the support and resistance video so let me give you an example and you tell me whether this is a bullish or bearish market okay based on these two criteria okay very clear first thing first you see this slope of this moving average is going upwards and the candlestick right here from here onwards it is above the moving average so you can potentially make a trade somewhere here capture this momentum or over here if you enter early right here you can capture this whole entire trend okay depending on whether you're a position trader or you're a day trader if you're a day trader you can capture this movement this movement your position swing trader you can capture this whole entire trend a portion of this trend so of course this one is a buy market all right meaning that i wouldn't make a sell here i would make a sell here or anywhere around here because it's too risky to trade against the trend if you can do it good then you can skip this whole entire video okay another example easily clearly at this area right here you see the moving average sloping downwards and then you see that the candlesticks are below the moving average then this one is a sell market so a little bit recap so you can see now that the first function of moving average is to tell you whether you are selling in the bearish market or are you buying in a bullish market make sure that you are trading along with the trend rather than against the trend so what does it mean by the moving average being a support resistance now please ignore this green line here first because i need you to just focus on this line okay this is the moving average 100 moving average sma okay it's a smaller moving average which i'm going to talk about in the next few videos what does it mean by dynamic support resistance so you can see that the price comes down here and then touches this level right here it tests this level so right now if you look at the green line it does the same thing okay price comes down here test this green line right here then goes back up price comes down here test this green line right here crosses a little bit then bounce back up so another thing that i need you to learn real quick okay is this thing called crossover okay so this is the moving average that has a smaller number so this one here is a 50 sma okay whereas this one here is a larger number and then 100 sma right here so what do i mean by crossover it means that when the smaller sma is above the larger sma it tells you that you are trading in a bullish market if the smaller sma crosses the larger sma like in this case it means that potentially the market might be changing directions but of course you see a little bit of lagging over here because the price has already went below 100 sma right here but the moving average hasn't reacted yet which is why this one of the downsides of moving average is that it is a lagging indicator and also doesn't mean that when the smaller sma converges to the larger sma it will mean that the market is changing direction for example right here you see that these two moving average starts to converge so you wouldn't want to sell too early over here because a lot of people they rush 
the whole entire process. They see the moving averages converging, then they start to sell. You need to have a confirmation before you go in. You can't just rely on moving average for you to say, okay, right now, it's time to sell. You need a lot more filters, a lot more confirmation indicators. But for now, for now, just focus on moving average. Okay. So another example for you right here. Right now, 50 SMA is below the 100 SMA. Hence, this one increases your probability for you to sell. Now, realize I always talk about these two keywords. Increase probability. What I'm saying is that never use moving average to predict the market. Nobody can predict the market. Whichever indicator that you use is just there to increase your probability of winning. Because no matter what sophisticated indicators they will use, things can still go wrong. You can still experience losses. It is part of trading. So the market goes bearish right here. Then after that, these two lines again converges. Okay, start to converge. Then eventually, the 50 SMA crosses 100 SMA. So you can potentially look for a buy here. And then for just now, you can potentially look for a sell here. Okay, so the next type of indicators is the exponential moving averages. So like I said just now, it responds faster to the changes in price, which, which is good because there'll be less lagging. But the downside of that is that it will produce a lot more. What's this? False signals. Okay, so there's a pro and con for both type of moving averages. Yeah, so the good thing about EMA is it gives more weightage to the more recent prices rather than giving equal weightage to every single price. And because it responds faster, so that's why it allows you to take your trades earlier. And aside from false signals, it also provides you with a lot more false breakouts. So be careful not to just rely on moving average for your trading because you need a lot more confirmation indicators. Moving average is just there as a complement. It cannot be the only thing they rely on because there are so many downsides. The first thing is that it is a lagging indicator. You cannot just rely on something that lags behind the price. Because as a lagging indicator, it follows the price rather than the price following the moving average. From just now, the example, you already see that only after the price has moved, then the moving average will start to respond to the change in trend. By the time you go in, it's already a little bit too late. It will give you false crossovers. Okay, so it doesn't mean that, oh, when you see a smaller moving average crossing the larger moving average, means that you should start to buy sell. Because just like false breakouts, you also have false crossovers. And also, moving average doesn't work every single time. You need work in certain market conditions, especially trending markets. Meaning that during non-trending times, moving average would not work. So let's say, for example, if you trade the range, if you like to trade consolidation markets, then moving average wouldn't be that useful for you. But if you're somebody who is a trend follower, then moving average is pretty useful for you. And also, if you're a scalper, then also moving average will not be that useful for you because you produce a lot of false signals. So if you're using super small time frames, like one minute, five minute, then you don't really need to rely on moving average as much as compared to somebody who just buy and then just write the whole entire trend. So one thing you need to bear in mind is that moving average is not meant for you to predict the change in trend. So what is it used for? It's used to confirm that a new trend has been formed. Yeah, so the other thing is that the higher the number of your moving average, okay, let's say for example if you use 200, it's going to be a lot more lagging as compared to let's say a smaller number like 20 SMA. In other words, the higher the number, the more it lags. So the more it lags, the more you shouldn't rely on it to enter the market. So what do I mean when I say that moving averages doesn't work in all markets, especially consolidation or ranging markets in a non-trending market? So you can see that at this point of time, the market right here is going sideways, okay? So even though you see a crossover over here from the bottom, okay? So right now, this green line is above the black line. 
instead of trending all the way upwards, the market instead comes back down. So if you expect to buy somewhere here and then hold it for a long term, very likely it's going to get you stopped up. So this is what I mean by a whipsaw action. It gives you a lot of false signals, so which is why you need a lot more indicators, a lot more confirmations for you to say that, okay, the market is finally trending right now rather than just going sideways, giving you tons of false signals. Okay, so let me just pull up this chart right here. Now, in order for you to insert this moving average, for example, if you want to put in a moving average of 100, go to insert indicators trend moving average then key in 100 shift 0 MA method simple apply to close style any color you want then press ok then you see this black line over here okay so you want to insert your 50 moving average same thing okay put that in choose any color you want let's say red okay then you see this 50 moving average right here okay so ignore all my horizontal lines for now. I've already tried to clear my charts by a lot because I use a lot way more indicators than this. I use a lot of calculations to calculate momentum. Okay, you can see that right here, there's a crossover of your 50 to 100 moving average. So you can see that the price cross over first, then we trace back. Very likely because of this dynamic support over here from this 100 SMA. And then your 50 SMA right here, it became a dynamic resistance okay you see the price tested this area right here okay this area right here and then broke the 100 SMA line eventually 50 SMA crossover then the price go on to a bearish trend so you can see that from this example okay the price changes in trend first changes in direction first and the moving average only responds starts to respond the next day on the 22nd of June which is why I always tell people that don't use crossovers to predict the change in trend. But of course, you need to also look at other time frames, the larger time frames, okay? I prefer the trend following style as compared to day trading. Let me just go back to the hourly time frame, give you another example. Again, right here, you see the price change in direction first on the 30th of May. And the moving average only respond on the late of 31st May. So what I would do is to wait until moving average crosses over first and then add a little bit more indicators to confirm the wider the gap between the smaller moving average with the larger moving average, the better it is. When it starts to converge like this, then you need to be careful. There might be a change in trend, you see? When it starts to converge, then the price eventually respond only a few days after but so with that said, when it comes to trading, don't just look at one time frame, look at multiple time frames. Depending on what kind of trader you are, if you are a scalper, then you look at M1, M5, M15, M30. I'm going to talk more about this regarding multiple time frames in another video. So you can see that at this point over here, the price has the 50 moving average right here. It acted as a dynamic resistance. Let me zoom in. Okay, at this area right here. And right after that again, that's another test right here. And then right after that, there's another test right here. So in a way, when you have a trading signal here, okay, if you put in your other indicators, when you have a sell signal here, this, this helps you increase your probability and confidence for a sell to say that, okay, this is a good sell when all the stars are aligned. But with that said, things can still go wrong even though all stars are aligned. This is just part of trading. Now here's an example of a false crossover, okay? You see that the 50 SMA cross 100 SMA. Instead of the markets going down, the markets continue to trend upwards. Only during the next crossover did the market really change the trend. So be careful not to rely on moving average alone. So then the question comes, what's the best moving average for you to use? There's no right or wrong. No right or wrong because it comes down to your trading personality, to your trading system, to your trading style. 
If you're a longer term trader, then you should be using larger numbers for your moving average. If you're a shorter term trader, then you should be using smaller moving average numbers. If you're a medium term trader, you're a day trader, you're a swing trader, then you can combine both small numbers and also high numbers moving average. Personally, for me, I use both. I use both EMA and also use both SMA. And I've seen some people, they only can work with just SMA alone without any EMA and I've also seen people who don't use any moving average at all and just trade based on price action and I've also seen traders who can trade without looking at price action all they rely on is just the news so the best trading style for you is one that suits your trading personality there's no such thing as a one size fit all system okay so make sure you choose an indicator a moving average that you're comfortable with but based on what I've shared with you today, these two are very commonly used. So before I end off, question for you today, how has moving average helped you in your trading? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you need me to cover more in detail on moving average, let me know too. So with that, I'm careful and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.